Hello, hello everyone, and we are back after some very light reading. Ah, <sighs> let's talk to Popola. Hey. Oh. Uh, oh wait, Devil. Hi. I kind of thought you'd never talk to us again. I understand you're doing this for the village, and that you don't have a choice. Pretty much, yeah. But look, why don't you go talk to Popola? I think she wanted to discuss the Shadow Lord with you. No head trucking in this case. Oh, just the eyes. I'm headed there next. Oh, and Devola? Yeah? Sorry about yesterday. I shouldn't have lost my temper like that. You don't need to apologize. Anyone would be upset when their friends are hurting. Let Emil and Kaine know that we're sorry, all right? All right. So wait, we gotta do some changes at this point. Which, um... Hmm, not here. First of all, I have all the records now. And... Read all of this, but we got the documents for... We got the documents for the Gestalt project. And we have 72% of the weapons. What weapons are we missing? I think I think we're missing the ones from the shop, actually. How are we doing on quests? Just 53%. I haven't done any side questing whatsoever. Uh, but I'm dead focused on the story. I also wanted to change... That's odd. I want to change the costume. But I can't seem to find where it is. Is it here? No. Okay, I'll check I'll check that out later. And I'll do it off screen. I feel great today, no cough, no fever. Watch out world, because Jonas are to play. Popola? Oh, hello. Look, I want to apologize for yes. Stop. You didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, but neither did you. I disagree. You're just trying to protect the villagers. And I jumped down your throat for it. It's very kind of you to say so. Regardless, please don't let it trouble you. Ahem. <clears throat> I believe there was something you wished to discuss with us. Oh, right. Yes, about that. You know about the Lost Shrine, right? The temple where I was first discovered. That's it. Well, it seems that the Shadow Lord's lair is connected to it somehow. Oh, ho. It was right under our pages the whole time. But the bridge that leads there is unusable. So, take a boat. A, a boat? Yes. The canal's finally been repaired. It took a lot longer than expected. What with the shades and all. I also asked them to provide a boat at the path to the Lost Shrine's back entrance. The ferryman will let you use it free of charge. That should make it easier for you to move from town to town. Thanks, Popola. I feel like you've done so much for me. I'm really grateful. <sighs> all right. I'll see you around. And for the love of everything, be careful. Okay. Talking to them now is really weird because at this point you know that they are with uh, the Shadow Lord who is... The path above the entrance to the shopping district should lead to the boat landing. Who is actually this How guy? excellent to know the canal is finished. Hopefully this puts our days of running all over behind us. The faster we can move, the faster we can save Yona. Let's use it as often as we need. Yeah, so as I was saying, it's so weird because... Uh, he was the one that made this pact in the first place. And this is not explained in the story, sadly. Oh, this guy is still alive. Hey, look who it is! Remember me? That red bag. By my pages, you're the slovenly half of that couple who refused to stop arguing. Hey, it's been a while. 
Sure has. I've been in charge of this canal since we last talked. Apparently, I did a pretty good job with it because they decided to make me the permanent ferryman. Oh, yeah, huh? Congrats. Thanks. Still, it's not all puppies and unicorns. The old ball and chain is always harping on me now about how much I work. Anyway, if you got a place to be, just let me know and I'll take you there. So obviously it's Lost Shrine, and this time we will remember uh, to get the the thing. Lost Shrine's up ahead, just past this cave. As well as the Shadow Lord's castle. Let us make haste. Mm -hmm. Lettuce. Lettuce is a very, very good veggie. Oh. And so What do you want? Go away, dirty, defective swine. Not like you, I'm different. So this time we can see what the shades are saying. And this will be brutal. I promise you, it's gonna be brutal. I'll try to skip as much combat as I can. Not that there is any at this point, I think. But still, you've been warned. Because repeating this four times is uh, a ludicrous amount of time. I don't think... yeah, no, you don't encounter anything else. Come on, I hate the stairs in this game. They make it appear so slow and it's not. Same thing for like near Automata. <laughs> again. Stop bothering me. Grimoire Vice has been taken away. Ansel is dead. There's no reason for me to exist anymore. My life is over. Just leave me alone. What? I... Ain't you excited, Sunshine? We finally get to bathe in blood. Don't talk to me. <laughs> I want to kill so bad I can barely stand it. I wish you actually played as Kaine. Like, I, I feel that what they did in uh, Nier Automata in this case is uh, brutal. Uh, wasn't there, like, Really? But let me just check it because I know that there is a quest for this. Don't make the same mistake. If you take some quests, you must finish them in that playthrough. Because, yeah. So. Gosh, that's stupid. And you have to redo the puzzles. Gosh. 
okay. Like, if, if there's something I hate about the game, there's gotta be it. This is all too easy. At least you can skip most of the stuff. Can you open the door now? So I have to move this here. Out of the way. How you have a shade there trying to kill you. I think that's it, right? Yeah. I'm just doing it as fast as I can, because I don't feel like dedicating too much time to it. Turn back! Turn back, they say. What's with these guys? Certainly not your garden variety shades. Their bodies aren't fully functional. Say, I've heard of this. A cursed area, where incomplete shades gather. Mm. Interesting. Very interesting. At this point, if anyone has played Bravely Default, um, it's not as bad, because Bravely Default really, like, got it wrong, I think, like, the first Bravely Default, if anyone has played that, it's just a, a, an insane grind fest, but still, I really can't justify the the repetition here. Magic defense. For the first time, yeah. Like, this time, I don't mind. Because it's actually super nice. But the other ones? I don't know. I don't know. And yeah, I know, I'm spoiling the game. There we go. Guard resistance, voodoo. Okay. And up. So you can see it's, it's relatively fast to do it because you can skip. <laughs> I've treated you all poorly. I mocked you, betrayed you. All because you went stole before the change was complete. But after all this, I think I can understand you. I think we can speak as equals. This makes me very happy. I hope we can spend the rest of our life. What was that? Kaine, Emil, look, from now on, I'm going to sleep outside with you. Why? I can't accept that you aren't allowed in the village. It's stupid. So you're staging a protest? I'm fun! Don't waste your time, but it just feels wrong. Well, that's really nice of you, but you still don't have to stay out here with us. Emil... You've got a super important mission. You can't sleep out in the rain. What if you catch a cold? 
Besides, I like camping with Kaine. Sometimes we sit around the fire and tell stories, or roast... Emil, that's enough. I got a fucking image to maintain. <laughs> We seem to be surrounded by a mob of helpless puppies. Just kick them aside. Spirate. Is that it? You're right. Hey guys, so first interesting part, here we go. Don't you touch them. Stop the little ones, they're too strong for you. These are creatures of the darkness. Lure them to the light. Pathetic to the end, I see. Aim for that statue. It's the leader. I'm not their leader. It is I who rely on them. It is they who saved me. Stop hurting my friends. Oh, you're funny. I'm gonna say... Beast. Those are my friends. <laughs> this is one stubborn son of a bitch. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Hey there, sunshine. You ain't feeling bad for this week, are ya? Ain't no turning back now. You got a lust for blood. Embrace the slaughter. All we know is the thrill of battle. Ain't that right, Kaine? Aha. Uh -huh. Tyran's not happy. Heine. thing. Kaine! Are you alright? Kaine! <gasps> I fear there is little we can do for her. No! Kaine! 
I gotta learn that song. What is happening? <laughs> it's all over for you, sunshine. Kaine! Kaine! Durant's in the house. Fucking crazy. It's Kaine's shade. With no other choice, we must strike it down. Kaine! Come back! That was fast. I'm not sure if she says anything at this point. I don't think I don't think that Tiran interacts with us actually. Now, pin her down! Yeah, no. Kaine. He doesn't. Oh dear. A true friend. Kaine! Kaine! I... I couldn't hold it back. I can't be with... We're always going to be together, Kaine! If you transform again, we'll just stop it again! As many times as it takes! I don't care how tough it is! We're gonna get you back! I like sleeping outside because I'm with you, Kaine! I'm able to ignore my appearance and keep going because of you! I'm weak and I'm sad! And I'm lonely, but you make me strong! You're my friend, and I need you! So don't you dare leave me! <laughs> True Nakama style. <laughs> True. Alright, alright. Stop crying. And... Thanks. I'm alright. So there you go. Um, Over there. We can see the lift. Pick this up. And what is this? Me? It's me. It's got some kind of writing on it, but I don't know what it says. How remarkably useless of you. Well, let's go ask Popola. I mean, so clever you are, but. You didn't tell him either. It's a cipher of some kind. Can you determine its meaning? I think this is the key to unlocking the Shadow Lord's castle. Here, take a look at this. I wrote down all the words I can understand. This fragment is called the Stone Guardian. Given that you found it in the Lost Shrine, the words must mean something. There are spaces here for four other frag Sacrifice, the Law of the Memory, Loyal Serp, the Law of Robotics, probably, and the Memory, but as for sac- Not a problem. Hmm? If we want to fill in the words, we just run around the world killing every big monster we find. Oh, splendid. By all means, let us undertake a murderous rampage. They're just shades. Besides, it's the only way to reach the Shadow Lord. At this point, she knows. She knows he's killing humans. She freaking knows. It's a dangerous task. Yeah, well, Yona's in even more danger. But how can you even be sure that she's... Because she is! Right? <sighs> and she's really Jump trying to dissuade him. Of myth, yeah? I'm on my way. Please be careful. Oh, and listen... About Kaine and Emil. The villagers know how much they've... I'll hurry them along the best I can. But can you please give them a little more time? I'll try. So in this case, I'm kind of skipping a little bit of the dialogue and I'm going a little bit faster. I'm very sorry for that, but... You gotta understand, like... Seriously. Uh, we're gonna change it this time. I'm gonna go for the force. Hopefully, said we might be able to. You will forgive me if I seem less than enthusiastic about such a trick. Because uh, last time I really was in a hurry to get to the to the other place. Because I wanted to make a guide. This time we can do it the fastest way. And this one in play, like this one implies less detours. So let's 
detours. Ah, better. Um, sadly, very sadly, we won't have the quests we picked up. So I'll have to do that off screen, which is very annoying, but eh, I guess it's better. Blasted dream. Yeah. Truly a nightmare I hope never to experience again. Oh, so it's the same thing. I hear you. Oh, well. The, div the divine uh, tree. Did you investigate and why? Well, I don't know. So, in this case, it's the same exact quest. Uh, I'm not going to read the dialogues again from scratch. Because it is. There are the grass, the trees, the woods. It's much easier to understand them now. Hmm. Why do we. You should talk, Vat. As if Grim. Hang on. Is the dark entity that governs all memories. May the words form themselves to your liking. Now you can super clearly understand Does them. Does that mean it'll tell us what we want to know? That'd be nice. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah, no. I will... You know what? I will go through the text. You can read it yourself, but I will just talk about the story they're referred to. I think that will be much more useful to you guys, so... This way you can watch my second playthrough and still be entertained. Um... So basically, in this case, it's kind of like uh, uh, this tree is obviously collecting data from the old world. Okay. Um, look at my memory. Um, what below the disease? I'm not sure if this refers to any story in particular. But... Um, Blue-eyed girl, same thing. So that was the Memory of Envy, and this is the next one. And it's very interesting. Here, they refer to a person who impales a beast, which is the Red Eyes Dragon, and um, it turns into a pillar of salt and dies. It is not a Red Dragon, but if you have played Drakengard 1, there is actually a dragon, which is the dragon that makes the pact with uh, the protagonist, which is a Red Dragon, but I don't think they're referring to that. But I do think they kind of mixed in the story of how um, they teleport into this universe from the universe they live in and uh, the main boss, like the antagonist, the goddess, crumbles into kind of like a pail of salt. Then that pail of salt dissolves and that's how we get the coronation syndrome. Uh, because at that point, the goddess uh, infects people with the salt that she spread in and she makes them choose. You either turn into dust, well, not whatever it is, chloride something, or you serve her. And that's how the army started. Like, a new army rises, that is the freaking army. And I kind of feels like they're referring to that here, even though it's told differently. And that's how all the projects start. So, it is amazing. And at this point, this might refer to the struggle of the protagonists going against the army. Because we don't know what happened in between. Like, we know that they fought the Legion, uh, which the Legion is the newfound enemies that you that are created from the salt and the ones that accept the pact with the goddess. So, yeah, I don't know. I, it, to me, it kind of feels like a hint to it. Uh, 23 companions. Remember, this number is different every single time. The eye color is different every single time. Last time it was 60 something for us, now it's 20. Uh, a red dragon falls from the heavens. Uh, this is. This is the freaking story. Like, this is Dragon Guard 1. I'm not joking. That's how it all began. That's like that's one of the endings of the story that kind of connects with this one. 
Ah, oh, I miss Dragon Guard. It, it's such a good franchise too. I really hope that now that this game has seen a little bit more of, um, I, don't, I don't know how to say it. It's had been more vi widely accepted. I really do hope that they adapt the Dragon Guard franchise because I would love like Dragon Guard Three looks amazing already. I can't imagine that game in like HD with the you know 2021 2022 graphics ah uh, you know hopes and dreams yeah so same thing same same thing if you if you didn't listen to this episode you can you can listen to all of this before uh, in the other episode that I did in the first playthrough. I read through all of this, by the way. But since this is the same, it makes no sense. Okay, so what was the color of Lost Envy? Blue, we know that. And it's interesting that the shade extended its remaining arm to I know I I must touch him. I must make contact. At this point. Um, it kind of feels like the shades are trying to communicate with it with him. Um, and at this point again, this this very point is the one that gives you the the hint. Like, shades have feelings. Shades are human. You are a bastard who's killing people for no reason. Mm. Oh, my 823, we know that. Yo, no. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you choose at that point. So, as you can see, we did that. I never realized shades were capable of rational thought. I don't care if they can tap dance and play the fiddle. I just want to kill them without all this hassle. With the tree defeated, we no longer have to worry about being buried in its world of letters. Unless, of course, time itself begins to rewind. Hmm. Okay, so we got another key. Let us rush towards the next one. Popola said we might be able to perhaps we um you have to initiate the event and this is the fastest way to do it uh because he will send you to repair the weapon if i'm not mistaken if he allows you to kill the robot right away that would be amazing but i don't think so and you might have to do the elevator uh repairing once again which would be horrible and I hope you don't have to, but, um... Guess we'll see. Okay. At this point, by the way, I'm rushing through the game because I know all of this, I've seen it. You have seen it, uh, there's no point in uh, delaying the inevitable. I really want you to see the, the parts that matter and that I know that are there. Obviously I'm being careful with the new content in the game, but uh, so far there's nothing new. Are we gonna die, Mom? A child. You've almost grown up now, my child. Stay strong. You must run now, you understand? Run as fast as you can. What about you? I'll challenge them and give you time to escape. I can't. Save my child. 
safe and happy. Promise that you will remember my, your mother. Mom? Mom, wait! Let's go together! Mom! me. Yeah. Mom, why? Who's there? Who are you? I'm Khalil. What's your name? Military defense robot. P-33. You are an intruder. You must be eliminated. Error. There is something leaking from your eyes. I'm crying, you big dumb robot. It's my mom. What is crying? Who is mom? Doesn't matter. I can't see her ever again because she's dead. My creator is also dead. He perished hundreds of years ago. Hundreds of years ago, really? 874 years, 10 months, 14 days, 4 hours, and 43 minutes. 44 minutes. Are you lonely? I am incapable of being lonely. Or missing others. Or crying. I'm crying because I want to die. I will die. If the humans catch me, they're gonna kill me. Why will they kill you? I will not permit the humans to kill Khalil. Huh? Military defense robot P-33 will protect you. You gonna help me? P-33 is charged with defending others. P-33 will defend Khalil. How nice. I, lo I love how, like, the... It's just a defense mechanism robot, so... It has to defend, so... Hooray! Thanks, robot. And since we're friends now, I'm gonna call you Beepy. <laughs> Poor thing. This Man, scene. There's gotta be tons of machinery here. Focus on the brother. Yeah, but I don't know how much we can actually use. Oh, wow. Check this out. It looks brand new. I wanna kill hey, him. Hey, be careful, alright? This place is dangerous. <laughs> I'll be fine. See? Oh no! You jerk. Huh? Look out! Huh? Sure you saw it this time, so he freaking killed his brother. And he blamed it on huh? the robot. Yeah, no, it doesn't work like that. No! Oh, that was scary. The noise of the intruders caused the structure to fail. They should have proceeded with more caution. One intruder has perished. That's terrible. I don't think they were chasing me. They seemed nice. Yeah, see, like, finally, you can finally Jump. see. Perhaps we should speak to the brothers. They might know something about this. Like, this is why I hate him so much. This is why I... Oh, hey there. It's been a while. 
You're the little one, aren't you? You've grown up. How fair is your brother? My brother's been dead for four years. Oh, I see. Please, forgive the question. It's okay. I need to ask you something. What is it? You heard any rumors about shades around here? Not the little ones. I'm looking for one that's unusually big and powerful. No, I haven't heard about anything like that. But I haven't really been listening. All I want is to destroy robots. Just rip them up. Uh, okay. Never mind then. See you later. Wait! Yes. I recently got my hands on okay, a Okay, you have to do the weapon quest. I thought you might get some use out of it. Don't we already have this weapon? <laughs> Shh. These things happen the second time around. Damn! Love it. I love this game. Like there there are points where you have the, the thing with, for example, the first time you fight the robot that opens the mouth, uh, its mouth. Um, there's a point where, oh yeah, sure, that's its weak point. Uh, that, that's its uh, weak point. How original. Or when they do this here, please. Yo, Katara, thank you. I'm not sure if he's the one who wrote this, but come on. This sword has seen better day. Yeah, it's pretty beat up. I mean, there's potential. Can you repair it? I can repair it. If you'll fix it, I'll... <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna need some... Only the real big enemies are... Also, here's the passcode to get... You got it. Uh, so at this I'm point... I'm gonna need some... Only the real big... You got it. By the way, what can I help you with? But I... Broken lens. But I do have Come memory back. alloy. What, do I have to just get in and out of the area? Really? They're gonna make me kill a robot, but I... I, ha I had forgotten about this. How sad. If you have the memory alloy, they should just let you come back. Like, oh, I've stumbled upon it on in my travels. You already possess the following item. It's a shame about the older lad. He was but a child. That's what I told you. I had the freaking item. Next video. Okay, ready? What's a ship? A large seagoing vessel that carries freight and passengers over bodies of water. Yay, you're so great, Pipi. You've learned so much. You have taught me much, Kalyu. You have helped to expand my vocabulary. You have instructed me in the ways of the outside world. Well, there's tons of stuff I don't know either. Maybe we should leave here and explore the world. We are friends. That's right. It's gonna be fun. So at this point, they're just preparing to leave. They just want to have fun. <sighs> Let's talk to this jerk. That's some pretty impressive stuff you found. I'll start upgrading your weapon right away. And since you did me a favor... Well, this is gonna take no sense and you wait... That would be... Okay, so, um, this guy's done. This appears we have some... Maybe Popola's found some in... Very well. So we have to go talk to Popola, then we go to see the marriage. And at this point, this is the third key. Um, the fourth is in the desert. Oh, and the last one is Eri. So there we go. But the Eri is super fast, actually, so that is... No, 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 don't take the stairs. <sighs> See, the... You gotta hate the stairs. Thank you, Shades. Thank you so very much. Gosh, you ha gotta hate the stairs, seriously. You're like the bane of my existence. Ah. Oh. Oh, 
let's see. Will she send us to the marriage? Learned anything Hello. new about the You know, I was just going you remember th that depressing sh not so much anymore, it sounds like. I just got this letter from Oh Sacrifice. That's right. You're up. Hmm. I'm afraid Grim What do you <sighs> The area has been and now they've not only opened I agree. It seems rather unnatural and dangerous. You're overthinking it. Besides, I don't care if it's dangerous. I won't get Yona back by just sitting around and waiting. There are shades there. I'll just kill him and be done with it. Uh, well, if that's the way you feel, I guess I won't stop you. Try speaking with the chief when you get there. Okay, so at this point we kinda can change it, because I think we can go to the airy or the wedding. The airy was a soul cr same thing here. But I think you can still pick up the letter. No. So interesting. If you do it the other way around, then you get different letters. Never realized. Or maybe it wasn't like this in the in the first game. Help! What there's the uh, the huge shade. Um, if we're lucky, we'll get it on our way there. I think it always appears when you have the quest, but I, may be, I might be wrong. Because he says that it appears sometimes and disappears all the times. I cannot fathom that village setting up a mercantile. They must have yeah, no, truly no one can. opened their minds. Yeah, I have my doubts. Aren't Everyone. you glad to be going back home, Kaine? Home? The place is a shithole. Don't be so yep. nervous, Kaine. We'll protect you. I got me taken care of. Worry about protecting yourself. Okay. Yeah, let's kill some people. Why not? Doesn't feel that good this time, right? The village. It's home to so many terrible little memories, isn't it, Kaine? <laughs> shut up, shut up, shut up! Ah, oh, Tiran, you're a bastard. I don't know if this is included in the story, but he's actually kind of like a serial killer, killer or something. Um, we or at least... Not desire. We do not desire needless conflict. If we can continue to live with humans, then we can continue to live peacefully. But that young man will come. Yes, the young man will come. He will kill us all. Women and children included. What should we do? What can we do? So at this point, someone sends you a letter for you to kill all of the, all of the people. And that is actually brutal. Because all they wanted to do is live in peace. And they have this secret where they have accepted the shades and they understand them and they live together. Uh, but, uh, like... So basically, you are a shell that developed a personality. And the fun fact here is that the humans that are supposed to be the other personality that never existed go with the shades. For example, if I had a sister, she knows that I'm a different person because I'm not the real brother. But she still accepts me as her brother, per se. And this is what happened in this village. Like, they're like, this is my family, it doesn't matter. If, if it's a shell, it's a shell, but it's kind of the same person. It's very strange, but there it is. And maybe in some cases they have just um, accepted that uh, to have both, like the shell and uh, the other personality. Because it ha we have seen it with many people. It's over. For 
us and for you. So yeah, um, at this point, many people may have accepted it. Like, yeah, we have to fuse. Okay, let's fuse. Because that's the whole problem. The, ho the whole problem is that they go to a point where you can't fuse anymore. Uh, hello? We're here from Popola's village. It's all. We came to ask about the letter you sent. Our days are numbered. Our village is doomed. And they're scared because... Like, they know that you're gonna kill them. As cheerful as ever, it's... You're the one who wrote the letter, right? I... I don't know about any letter. What the hell is going on here? It may be faster for us to take our inquiries elsewhere. Let us ask around. Someone must know something. Well, yeah, they do know. And you're... They know that you're a fucking mass murderer. That's what they know. How fun is that? I mean, obviously you don't know better, but... At the point where the girl stands in front of you and says, Leave my brother alone. Sorry, the other way around. Like that's that's when you should realize. Make sure. Uh, nothing new, right? Nah, no, they don't. They don't have anything new. My yeah, still the best Thanks. weapons in town. Welcome, man. A letter, huh? So you know about? Hmm, maybe I don't. I'm not sure. Ah, which is? Oh, uh, you could say that. Ah, I've heard the rumors. Here to hunt shades, are you? Indeed. Our aim is to defeat every last one. Every. Everyone. 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 You basically told him you're gonna kill his family. Vice! Beware. This How man is a shit. Tom is that. Damn it. It's a trap. I figured as much. You guys sure are taking your goddamn time. A thousand. We were distracted by the local welcoming party. Want some help? You're a killing humans, by the way. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Kaine, the villagers are possessed. But not all of them. Some are still human. So oh, be no. careful. They're, they're not possessed. Don't make this mistake. I'm uh, recovery twenty percent. Ooh, that's good. They're not possessed. They know. They know it. They chose this. Get out of here! No way! I'm not gonna abandon my own sister! Kanye, what's going on? Don't be fooled by this lady. She's a shade! So what? No. No. You just You people are the monsters here. Stay back, kid. Your sister is one of them now. I don't care what she is. She's my sister, and I love her. So that's just the gestalt. You damn ass. Why have you done this? We just wanted to live our lives in peace. Stop it! Don't hurt my sister! You monster, you possessed monster! Ooh. They have some very good drops. It is you who have lost humanity. These people are behaving as if we are the villains. Focus, we are. Because. Kill! Villagers are under attack over there. Emil, watch Kaine. I'll go clean up over there. All right. 
a home. It's all over. This village is history. Yeah. Oh, wait. I didn't have to go up here, right? No. No, I didn't. Get them. Get them. So the villagers are again against us. Why did you even come here? Why did you even come here? But that's the thing. Someone sent the letter. That is the thing. I have seen this. And if you're asking why shades are becoming so powerful, it's because by my pages is this beast a shade um, as well. Let me just finish that look. No, 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 I didn't. No! If we keep this up, we're gonna kill them all! We can't let that happen! So, one interesting fact. Our village, our world, where am I? Who am I? Um, so what happened here is not that uh, something weird. No, no, no. It's the villagers themselves, because uh, the humans weren't content with uh, with just uh, how to say it, uh, separating soul and body. No, 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 no. They continued experimenting, because if you just separated the humans, obviously the legion wouldn't be defeated. There would still be people from the legion out there. Uh, they wouldn't be multiplicating numbers anymore, but they still had to finish them, so to say. So they started experimenting on uh, the vessels and the souls to create new weapons. So that's why shades have this power. Um, and, uh, and that's why you have the story of a male and all the lab and stuff like that. What did I want to do? I wanted to... Do, 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 do. Yeah, I wanted to increase this. I wanted to change this here to this one. Which gives it a huge increase in magic. I don't know, just to make it, just to make it faster. Mm, so yeah, you have to evade. It will take more than a barrage of magic to stop us. The first to waver is the first to die. I sense magic coming from the center of that eye. Yeah, see that's it. Will it turn? Wait! I think those are actual people! Hold nothing back! Those are shades! Emil, see it. The surrounding tentacles appear to deflect magic. Now, focus your magic on the beast's center! Such speed! At this point, every single one of them has realized that they have feelings and that they're actual humans. They just didn't want to see it. They don't. They didn't need Popola and Devola to tell them. And it is very ironic that the, that the weapon that the humans created is actually killing them. Look out! Something's coming! Yep. Its weak point is located around the back. Try attacking it from above. At this I'll point. Try to pin it down. Emil. Yeah. At this point, we just have to. Emil. Continue. Oh, I'll keep it busy. You, 
You should be able to attack from behind. Go around and get it. Please, hurry. Emil can handle this. We must circle behind the creature at once. Yeah, yeah. Poor Kaine, she's just dying there. You must strike it in the eye. Okay, so at this point we can just do this here. And break it. It's escaping to the inner level. I'm coming. Gotta catch my breath. Careful. Okay. Won't help anyone if we lose you here. God damn it! We beat the hell out of that thing. How can it still move? Its combined powers are beyond even my greatest suspicion. It's not that bad. Come on! Help me take it out! I'm on it. So obviously, that's the boss. Kamehameha is real here. And Emil going berserk. Oh. So here they start showing the archives about relapse. Emil! Emil, wait! He's gone. His instincts have taken hold. The ultimate weapon is being deployed. Ah, oh, fuck. This ain't good, sunshine. Yep. How the hell did she survive, by the way? Uncontrollable magic. I have to protect the people I love. That was the only thought, as I unleashed a magic powerful enough to destroy not only the Shade, but everyone else as well. All of them. So many innocent lives. Destroy, eviscerate, crush, kill. These are the dark impulses that override all of the thoughts. As a being that was created to be a magical weapon, these are my instincts. Maybe it's better to call them our instincts. Mill's Dream Rampage Klaxon sounds from deep within the bowels of the laboratory. Thick metal shatters drop down, sealing the room with a series of dull metal thuds. Aboard the experiment! Number six, out of control! Everyone get out here now! Get out of here! The researcher's words are abruptly cut off as a massive hand materializes out of the gloom and lifts him high into the air. The researcher begins to scream. He screams and screams, the sound echoing of the walls of the laboratory, until the hand squeezes down, coating the room in deep crimson hue. The rest of his colleagues stand in silence, mouths open, unable to process what they have just seen. Then, a female scientist takes a step back and let's fly with a heart-breaking wail. A 
that is a terrible mistake, for the sound of a cry suddenly brings forth a monster in all of its terrible glory. Its body is a bloated corpse, its head a grinning skull, and it is massive, many times the size of a human. The head lolls from side to side and trumps about the room on all fours, bringing to mind the wild maneuvering of some wretched starving beast. This creature, this thing, is experimental weapon number six, also known as Halua. Oh no, please stop! Oh god, save me! Save me! I don't want to die! One by one, the maddened cries of the researchers are silenced. Number six understands their petitions. It pays them no heed. Instead, continuing its rampage of destruction and slaughter with a focus that borders on obsession. After an eternity, the screaming stops. The alarms fall silent, and only then does the creature make a sound, howling out with an unfathomable roar that echoes up and down the empty holes of the blood-soaked laboratory. The sound that curses those who had dared bring such evil into the world, and yet one that also seems to be pleading for help. Two sets of footsteps echo in the otherwise silent corridor in the first level of the laboratory. One set belongs to a young boy, his eyes blindfolded and his hands restrained. The other belongs to a severe man in a long white coat. The man drags the boy along by means of a long chain attached to a set of shackles on his wrists. Rubble is scattered here and there across the floor on the corridor, making the journey, the journey an exceedingly difficult one for a boy who cannot see. Um, excuse me? Could you please walk a bit slower, sir? I'm not used to being blindfolded and... Rather than stopping, the man only increases his pace, causing the boy to stumble in an attempt to keep up. This last humiliation proves too much, and the boy finds himself unable to rest his fall. Without the ability to brace himself, he topples on the floor, smashing his head on a pile of debris, and causing a tickle, trickle of blood to worm its way down his pale, frightened face. Organized by the pain, the boy inadvertently opens his eyes, causing the falling drops of blood to emit a strange clackling sound before transforming into tiny white rocks. Close your damn eyes! roars the man. Yes, sir! stammers the boy as he slams his lids shut. He hadn't realized the blindfold had slipped off during the fall, but now he keeps his eyes squeezed shut so tightly that sparkles appear against the lack of his vision. The boy is obviously a male, also known as number seven. He's a magical weapon whose eyes are capable of turning stone anything that falls under their gaze. Now look at me, barks the man. Never look at me. I'm sorry, sir. I'm looking at the ground now. So if you just hand me the blood. Instead of waiting for him to finish, the man extends one foot and presses Mill's face to the floor while with a heavy black foot. Sir, stop. You're hurting me. I told you to keep your eyes shut and your mouth shut, so do it. Man knows this boy, this weapon. Uh, man knows this boy, this weapon, could wipe him out with a single glance, and yet subduing him in this way gives him a sense of relief. After making certain the boy is sufficiently coved, the man leans down, retrieves the blindfold, and knots tightly around the boy's quivering head. Right then, on your feet, let's move. Mill staggers to his feet, trying to ignore the red liquid oozing down his face. Blood doesn't matter. Pain doesn't matter. All that matters is finishing the job they had set out for him to do. The second level of the laboratory is in even worse shape than the first. The environs are littered with rubble and rock, making the thought of a descent foothold laughable. Descent foothold. When the man's eyes linger in selection of rubble stained in deep red, a sudden image of warm, gooey brown is slathered and a strawberry sauce. His stomach lurches at this thought, but when he attempts to avert his eyes, they land on the remains of a human being rendered into what could only be described as paste. Man blinks, his mind goes strangely blank before attempting to determine exactly how many humans had been sacrificed to create the scattered piles of flesh around him. After a moment, his thoughts simply cause altogether, cease altogether. 
as if his mind realizes that trying to put such a thing into form is folly. You can go the rest of the way on your own, says the man in a voice much weaker than he wishes it to be. I mean, what doesn't matter? You're not even human, you're a monster. With this, the man spins around and dashes back down the hall. Helpless Mill simply listens as the footsteps of his erstwhile captor fade into the distance. Mill finds himself alone in the room, the stench of death and blood. For a moment he considers opening his eyes, but the thought of the horrors that await him quickly squashed this plan. Instead, he stands still and listens intently. Eventually, a far-off sound reaches his ears. That's the howl I heard before. Mill resumes walking, using the sound and the distant voice to guide him. Almost as if it was calling him home. By the time Mill reaches the third level, he's moving on memory as much as sound. His hands and face are covered in fresh wounds from numerous falls, but every time he thinks about giving up, his mind returns to his sister. We studied together, we ate cookies together, we cried together, we laughed together, and sometimes I was the only one who got yelled at. That's why I was never lonely. Our being together allowed me to stay strong. For Emil, his sister was all he had to live for, so holding that feeling close to his chest, he pressed on, one slow step after the other. Finally, he found himself drawing close to a certain experimental chamber, the deepest part of the laboratory. The howl is very close now, and as he touches the switch that controls the door, he thinks about his mission. Number six is the ultimate weapon. She is his sister, and he must turn her to stone. The door slowly opens, revealing the massive interior in the experimental chamber. The experimentation chamber. After a few steps, Emil removes his blindfold and slowly opens his eyes. His sister looks before him, but she looks nothing like the girl he once knew. Instead, he's a savage beast crawling on all fours through the shattered, shredded remains of researchers. A thing that had been his sister stops and tilts his head in Emil's direction. He focuses his gaze on it. A series of soft crunching sounds emerge from the creature as his magic does its terrible work. There's the fingers, the hands, arms, legs, head. The little color the beast once possessed fades into a dull ashen gray. And yet somehow it summons what strength remains and pulls itself toward the mill one slow, lumbering effort at a time. Wailing, the massive monstrosity closes in. Is she worried about me? Or is she coming to kill me? Neil feels prepared to accept either outcome. After all, this was his older sister, the person he loved more than anyone in this world. Alua, I... The moment Emil speaks, number six comes to a sudden halt. Silence descends on the chamber as the siblings stare at each other. Sorry, Halua, but everyone says you're too powerful. This is too dangerous unless I seal you away. I am sorry. As Emil watches her body begin to turn in stone once more, and the six simply waits in utter, perfect silence. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry! The moment number six petrification is complete, her memories float into Emil's mind. The two of them huddling together in the cold, all alone in the world, with no one to protect them. All she wanted was to save her little brother, and yet it was that little brother who, in a sense, saved her. The moment the petrification is complete, Emil sinks to his knees. A frozen sister and a little brother racked with sin. Alone in, his, in this cold cage, the two of them weep in a single silent voice. It was our combined power that destroyed the area. All existences, entire lives, in their memories. We took it all. We took everything. My sweet, gentle sister turned into a monster. And the same thing will happen to me, now that I have the power. If my instinct as a weapon win, uh, win out and destroy me in the process. 
If that power ends up hurting someone I love, I... This is the same. But I... It's all right. <laughs> really? Don't look back. And we got the sacrifice key. We had best be off. Yeah. So one thing I want to say here is that, uh, and we'll finish the chapter here, by the way. Um. So one very important fact is that when uh, the goddess and the dragon and uh, like the main protagonist of the Dragon Guard game comes in, uh, what the humans find is that uh, obviously they can't do anything about the goddess. So that's that's it. Like she starts turning people into an army for herself. But they find that with uh, with with the remains of the dragon, uh, he and the goddess brought magic into this world. And what they do is they start using the the remains of the dragon to experiment with them and uh, try to use the magic that he had. And that's why we have magic here now. Like that's it, it's not that the humans in our world developed technology is that uh, there was some older, like, older world, these guys interdimensionally, so to say, or whatever you would call it, jump into this world, and basically there are two parts, so the goddess and the dragon, and what we are seeing is the experiments with uh, the remains of the dragon. So that's how Emil appears, that's how number seven appears, uh, sorry, number six. Uh, Emil is obviously number seven. And that's how all the magic is working. Uh, I'm not sure if they also used that magic to create the Gestalt project. I think it is that is the case, I'm not sure. But that's all what you're seeing. And it's a, it is actually, if you play the Drakengard games, it is astonishingly similar to what you see in those games. So it might be a hint. But yeah, guys, um, thank you so very much for watching. I will do this in two chapters. I think that that's a very healthy way to do it because uh, they will drag for one hour and something, but at least if you want to watch it, you have it. If not, I mean, feel free to skip to the important parts. I might even have like timestamps for it because it's just repetition. And if, if any one of you wants to keep me rumble about like the background of the game, like the Dragon Guard games, this is this is the place for me because uh, you have seen most of the story at this point. And I don't know, I, I just have a huge passion for this game, so I'd love to share these you know, that knowledge with you. So, hope you like it, hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you want, and see you in the next one. Bye bye.